Just got in the water, saw a big whiting out there. A couple of nice big stingrays over here. The water is fairly calm, but we've got a little bit of a south wind tonight. Let's put a little bit of a rip. Oh, there goes a needlefish. I don't know if you can see them right there. They like to come out at night. But we've got a little bit of chop to the water. Not too bad. There goes a flounder right there. First one. He's not legal. Check that guy out. Pretty cool. I just got in the water. He's probably like 11, 12 inches. See if I can stir him up. Good sign though, seeing fish. He is not, he is not shy at all. <laughs> He's like not, I've touched him like 12 times. There he goes. He was not scared at all. Oh, here's another flounder. He's legal. Got him. I, I about stepped on this guy. Woo! That was quick. Just getting started. And already seen two. One legal. That's awesome, man. Good fish. Let's get a measure on him. Just to see how long he is. This one is about... 17 he's almost 17 inches awesome first fish man i'll take it heck yeah way to go. I, I haven't been walking but for like five minutes if that not even a lot of people ask me they're like how do you know what's legal and you really you just gotta eyeball it and once you start looking at them and you kind of have a feel for it you, you know you can tell what's legal, what's not. All the flounder that I've gigged, none of them have been even like right on the edge. Like the ones that I think are close are usually like 15, 15 and a half inches. And of course, 14 is the, the, the limit. So as long as you just are cautious, don't gig the little ones, that's all there is to it. Another needlefish coming right up to me, checking me out. That's the coolest part of course it's always cool to get some flounder but one of the really cool things about coming out here and doing this is just seeing all the life at night the crabs the fish the bait it's pretty cool oh we got one up here oh good fish good fish good fish i need you to stay put stay put Got him. That's a big one. Oh yeah. That's a good fish. Oh yeah. Real good fish. Heck <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, this was probably close to 19. Awesome fish. Woo! I had to make a quick decision on that one because uh these big ones are moving. Man, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving this. I'm so pumped. All right, we're getting a quick measure on this guy. Ballpark. Oh yeah, he's 18, let's see, 18 and a half. Woo, and heavy, heavy fish. Man, that's so cool. Really nice fish. I don't know how well you can see. I'm just trying this angle here. Beautiful flounder, awesome fish gonna be delicious man a lot of meat thick fish that's a good one love it man i'm having a blast tonight that fish was right on the beach he was just chilling and i could see him from pretty good ways off that's the cool thing about these lights when you put them behind you you can see that fish right on the edge we got a tiny little guy right here look at this there he goes itty bitty Got one right here. Coming up, coming up. That fish looks legal, but I'm gonna let him go. He's a little on the small side. He is probably 14, but he's like right on the edge. Let's see if I can touch him.
Here we go, I won't touch it. Whoop, just touched him. <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> I probably could have just picked him up and measured. <laughs> Oh, just scared one off. Didn't even see him. About stepped on him. I, I think we got another one up here though. Let's see if we can get to him. Yes, that's a good fish. Don't run, buddy. Don't run. Ah, oh, dang, I was just about to get him. Ah, oh, should have been a little quicker. Dang, that was cool, saw two. There's a nice little pocket, and I saw one that that I scared off before I ever saw him, and then and then that second one. I'm going real slow now, just to see if there's any more. Oh, there's one coming at me. One swimming right up to me. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was crazy. He swam right to me. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know how good he's on here. I don't want to pull it off. He's kicking a lot. Okay. That was wild, man. <laughs> he swam right to me. He wanted to get gigged. Oh, that's a good fish too, man. 17 and a half. Another stellar fish. Awesome flounder. Swim right up to me, man. Just <laughs> how crazy is that? That's wild, man. It's real obvious why these fish are here up close at night. You can see all the little baby whiting just right up next to the beach. And they, you know, when there's just even a little bit of wave action, they're getting washed around. And I am sure that those flounder are eating those little baby whiting and they're they're all over i mean they're just perfect bait size there goes one right there goes a few and then it, even tiny ones right there they're probably eating those too so i've got three fish in the bag i may only gig one more fish so i may try to just examine what's out here and if i come across a really big one and get an opportunity to gig it but may just kind of explore for the rest of the evening oh here's one right here Looks like a good, oh wow. That one might be a really good fish. See if you can tell where he is. Can you point him out? I don't know if you can tell in the GoPro, but he's right in front of me. That is a, that is a nice fish. That's probably, man, I don't know if he's 20 or not. He's just staring me down. That's a good fish. All right, we're gonna take him if he if he doesn't move. Got him. Got him. That's a really good fish. That's probably the biggest one I've I've gigged. Oh yeah. That's a flatty. <laughs> That's a really good fish. Get a good measure on this guy. Oh man, this is a big flounder. This is my the biggest for sure. 20. He is like 20 on the dot. 20 incher. Look at that guy. What a flatty. <laughs> oh man. That is a good freaking fish right there, man. That is so cool. Man, it's gonna be delicious. This is so fun. It's so cool seeing this life out here, being able to come out here and provide for my family. Flounder season uh, is still October. Flounder season closes. I don't know if you can see me. Flounder season closes in November, which is their spawn, which is, which is great. That's a re really good thing uh, to get these flounder numbers back where they need to be. We've changed our regulations. Uh, it used to be 10 at 12 inches, but now it's five at 14, which is, which is great. Big fan of that change. 
but that's an awesome fish right there. <laughs> Gonna taste so good. One had to be laying right here. Oh, that is like the perfect, I wonder if it's still there. That is like, you can see his tail and everything. There was one laid up right here. You can, I can, I'm looking in the GoPro, you can totally see the outline of that flounder. That was a nice one. That might've been the one I just gigged even, <laughs> but he was laying right here. That's awesome. Here we go, we got a blue crab with barnacles all over him. Oh, that blue crab is eating a jellyfish. I didn't know blue crabs ate jellyfish. I don't know if you can see the jelly or not. Here's another outline per i mean you can see the tail and everything that is so cool when you can see where they were laying right here next to the beach probably just gorging on whiting right now got gargantuan here big old flatty they are so cool looking at them just laid up right there that is a big daddy right there i'm just admiring this fish wow I'm trying to show you with the underwater gopro without touching him there water's not real deep he's just hanging out right here that's crazy. That's a really good fish. We're not going to gig him. I already got four. We're going to let him go. I'm going to see if I can touch him. Again, we could. We got one in our limit, but I got I got plenty of fish. So we're just going to touch this guy if I can. No, oh, he darted right before I got my hand on him. <laughs> he felt me coming. That was a good flounder right there. That is, that is cool, man. What a great night. Just being out here. It's so quiet. Other than the little bit of waves, light wind, it feels great, it's comfortable. Really educates you on how these fish act and react and you know where they want to be and what what they favor. A lot of details you can pay attention to. Uh, not with just flounder, but you know, the whiting and I've seen a few redfish and the mullet just uh very educational good morning beach bros welcome back to the beach today i'm doing if you can see it i don't know it's still dark i'm doing some flounder gigging this morning it's the wee hours of the morning and gonna see if i can get a legal flounder or two to take home and cook up because if you follow the channel you know i can't catch a flounder on hook and line so i'm just gonna see if i can stab one so <laughs> i've hooked myself up with the light and I've got a gig that I'm borrowing from a buddy and I'll go over because I know I'll get questions about this I'll go over my light that I that I've got now that I just purchased uh, after I get done gigging I'll show you at the house let's see if we can find some fish and I picked me up a flounder light at a local bait and tackle shop Sam's here in town I've got maybe another hour or so before the Sun comes up the wind is not really in my favor it it's supposed to be coming out of the north, and it is mostly, but there's a lot of east in it too. You got a stingray right here coming up. See him right there, scurrying off. See you, buddy. Got one up here. He just moved. Got him. Got him. There we go. Yes! Got a fish. Got a flounder. First one of the night. Heck yes. All right, I just measured him. He's 15 and a half. Good fish for our area. We don't get a lot of the big ones, so that's a good one. First fish on the stringer. It's kind of hard doing everything by yourself. This is the first time I've gigged on my own. It's definitely helpful to have somebody with you. Depending on what part of the country, what part of the world you're in, 
that uh, that's probably not a big flounder. I know in different areas you get really big ones, but here they we just don't get those massive ones as consistently. Oh, here's another one right next to the beach. I, I just walked like not very far. That one looks kind of small. Yeah, I don't think that one's legal. I'll jump him. Yeah, that one's kind of small. Yeah, not legal. But that's cool. We're see we are seeing fish. Those are the first two like decent ones I've seen tonight. So what I'm doing, I've got this light behind me. This is a trick that I learned from my buddy that took me. And it does make it easier to see because what, what I'm looking at when I'm doing this is I'm actually looking at the edge because right on the edge of that that line is usually where you'll see them kind of the back sticking up a little bit you'll just see kind of a different something different in the terrain you'll see them kind of coming if you put it out in front of you i mean it, even if you angle it or that that glare from the light kind of, it's a little too bright so if you put it behind you you can actually see better with the brightest part of that light not in your in your vision there's a tiny one hey oh there he's digging down small guy there he goes there he goes there he goes <laughs> little guy it's, it's just cool to see fish i told you i'd go over my lights and gig so i just picked this up at a local tackle store this is the company that i'm using coastal flounder lights looks like they've got a facebook page they just must supply directly to this store they've even got a number looks like you can call john there's his phone number right there if you want to give him a call or damon <laughs> i don't know these people i'm just uh i used it and it and it was really cool this is a 5,000 lumens light so it's pretty bright it's just got the leads coming off here that you hook to this battery this is a 12 volt battery and you just hook these guys up pretty simple and boom you got your light on which it's uh really super bright and this is a bamboo gig my buddy dusty let me borrow it this is not mine and it's just got the the spearhead or whatever you call it on here um b and m spears number seven whatever that means but it's got five stabbers prongs whatever you want to call it <laughs> i don't know the terminology here but you can see what i was using and that was it and i uh, really like the light though i'm pretty stoked about that and i just had that in my book bag hooked it up uh super easy to use it was comfortable i did really like the light so i don't know if you can i don't i don't know if you can go call those guys or what but it's a, it's a good light thumbs up i'm gonna get our flounder cleaned up and i'm no expert fish filleter especially when it comes to flounder but I'm just gonna show you what I do. If you know how to play flounder, this video is not for you. This is just so people that maybe have never done it can see, get an idea of what to do here. But what I do, I feel for this little pocket. This is their, their intestines. And I'm just gonna cut at an angle right above that and then right towards the head. Um, I probably could have cut back some there, got some of that meat. So I probably should have rounded that out a little bit, but that's okay, we're, we're good. And then from here, we're just gonna follow the backbone like we would any other fish. Get that cut started. And then just ease right down that backbone. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this up and look at what I'm doing. I poked through a little bit on the other side, so I'm trying to work around that. Try to avoid that if you can. Again, like I said, I'm no expert flounder filler, <laughs> but I get the job done. Just get the meat. Obviously, you want to get as much as you can on these fish. So you want to make good cuts. See, so I, I just poked through, which is okay. We're not going to lose any meat there. Just kind of made my job a little harder for me. Okay, I'm gonna point out something. I'm gonna stop. I could have just, you know, cut right through there. I've never seen anybody talk about this with flounder on, on a flounder cleaning video. Maybe you've seen it, I don't know. 
they've got this little i don't know if this is their pea sack or what i don't i don't know as much about fish anatomy or the anatomy of animals as it probably should but whatever that is i'm pretty sure it's pea it smells really bad and it will make your meat just smell and taste bad so you don't want to cut that and get it on the meat so i try to work around okay that worked out perfect i was just able to pull that over so i don't even have to cut that so be careful is right down here at the bottom you want to try not to puncture that which i might have yeah actually cut through it right there so but i, I don't think any of that got on the meat i think we're good <laughs> you want to be careful with that joker right there and continuing with the white side i always start with the white side first just going to remove the meat from the skin and i needed to sharpen my knife but it's still early and my wife and daughter are still in bed so i couldn't run my sharpener because <laughs> it's kind of loud and they've got a real small section of pin bones i just go ahead and split that fillet right down the middle and then you'll see there's like this little extra section right here and if you just remove that you'll see it that's the bones so really beautiful fillets that's the thinner side the camouflage side has thicker fillets on it this is a little more meat on this side so same thing we're going to split that fillet and you don't even have to cut it it just comes right apart and we're going to cut right there <laughs> just to make sure i don't rip it and then again they've got this little extra section right here and i just removed that there's a few bones in that and man, oh man, look at those two juicy fillets. That is gonna be delicious. That's plenty of, of fish for me and my wife. One average size flounder. I gigged us a delicious flounder. Cool, sounds good. We don't get flounder very often, are you stoked? I am, yeah. It's, it's like a treat because I don't catch them. I'm not very good at flounder fishing as I talk about it. You know, it's, it's a tough fish to catch, so. Usually we don't get it unless I get an opportunity to actually go gig them, which uh, has only been a couple times. So, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna do it one of your favorite ways. We're gonna do a little lemon butter sauce. Mm. It's like one of the best ways to cook flounder, in my opinion. Sounds good. I am not a chef and don't claim to be. I try to keep things simple in the kitchen. And this is just gonna be for lunch. So we're gonna do this real easy. All this is, is just flour, salt, and pepper. And I'm just gonna put that on the fish first. This is Courtney's contribution. <laughs> Mac and cheese. That's right, my specialty. <laughs> I just use one lemon and use the juice from it. This is gonna be for later for our lemon butter sauce. I've just got a little bit of olive oil in here and dropping them in. Love the sizzle. That's a decent sized flounder. I didn't think it would take up this whole pan, but it just about did. Once you get this golden brown crust to it, this is really hard to do with one hand. You go ahead and remove the fish and then we're gonna make our sauce. I broke that piece, had a casualty. Yeah. I removed the pan from the heat. I'm gonna put the butter and our lemon juice from our one lemon. I turned the heat down to low. We got our butter melted in our lemon butter sauce. And go ahead and put the fillets back in. I'm gonna let them soak. Just gonna let those fish marinate in that sauce and let it soak it in. Oh, it's so good. Look how delicious that looks. I drizzled some of that sauce over the fish. Woo! On our nice paper plates. What do you got to eat there? Is that a hot dog? We're a chicken. Chicken? I love our macaroni and cheese paper plates with our delicious piece of fish. I too. You have mac and cheese You do too? too? Mm -hmm. You do have yeah, mac and cheese. Too. Yeah, we all have mac and cheese. You, you want to take first bite? It looks good. This is my favorite way to eat fish. Yours too. Mm. Delicious. No, so two, good. Two thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Chicken. We don't have any. You want to try a bite of this? No. What? Ooh, take a bite. Just yeah, try it. Bite. Come on. 
Mm. I love it. It's so It's yummy. very good. I think mm -hmm. you'll like it. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. And I know this one's going to be good, but I'm going to do a bite. Man, flou flounder is a delicious fish. This is a great way to cook fish. Mmm. That is so good, man. Um, it's definitely good. It's good. That's right. <laughs> it's definitely one of my favorite ways to cook fish. Like, and I think it is Courtney's. Oh yeah. Favorite. Oh yeah. That this is this is numbers. It's hard to get us all in the shot there. <laughs> This is your number one, right? Oh, yeah. Hello, Beach Bums. Welcome back to the channel. This evening, Courtney and myself, we're attempting our first try at some flounder gigging this year. Don't really know for sure 100% if flounder have moved into the surf real good yet, but it's getting to be about that time of year, so we figured we'd come give it a shot. Courtney has, I don't think you've ever called a flounder. <gasps> Crab. Don't let him get you. Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, you stepped on I did. I did step on. I stepped on a crab. It's okay. I don't think you've ever caught a flounder, no. much less gigged one. No. Stabbed one in the face. <laughs> Never done that. So. Sounds like a good way to get some pent up aggression out. Yeah, you know, it's pretty fun. Not that I have any of that. Not at all, of course. Yeah. But we, uh, we're gonna see if we can find a few flounder. We don't need a lot for a meal, but we'll see if we can see some and let Courtney give them a little. A little tap a little tap on the head that's right <laughs> all right so with the gig if we see one you know of course i'll point it out to you you want to try to gig towards their head okay and you just want to get straight above them like this stab down hard and hold it there okay like pin them just lift up and kind of press them against the sand keep them in the water and get them to the beach okay so don't don't just like try to stab them and you know you know pit, well just yeah just like just hit them well no just hit them yeah <laughs> <laughs> hit them and try to pin them down okay oh. he that me. crab yeah, he scared me. <laughs> Look at him. yeah he's he was buried down and i was trying to see what it was and he scared me he's gonna get you ghost crabs the water is really dirty at location number one we're thinking about packing up and moving visibility is way better at spot number two we can see which is important <laughs> i can see so much further out Ooh, look at all the whiting those are great flounder baits right there I guarantee you that's what they're hanging around eating all right we see we've got our first flounder do you see him yeah right there oh did he, oh, he moved he's not legal I don't think. Yeah, he's a little guy. See him buried down right there? Still? You see his eyes? See him? There he goes. See him swimming? He's close. Like, he might be right at 14, but we're going to leave him alone because he's on the edge. Probably not legal. Well, that's cool, huh? Yeah. First one. It's cool to see him. Did you see where he was? I mean, he was just right, right up on the beach. Well, that's a good sign. We saw our first fish. All right, uh, get right over top of him. Go straight down and pin him down. You got this, like you mean it. There you go. All right, good job. All right. Oh, I feel so mean. No, you're good. All right, now keep them in the water. First gig flounder. Walk them this way. <laughs> Walk them this way. There you go. I didn't get his head. You're, you're, it's okay. It's okay. Just take oh, him to the beach. Him. You're good. You're good. It's okay. I'm dragging the thing. Is that okay? Yeah, you're fine. All right, just, just, just take him over to the beach. Oh, I feel so You're good. <laughs> there you go. You got him. You got him. Good job. Way to go. All right, hold that. Oh, nice him. fish. Yeah, yeah, we'll get him. <laughs> good job, Courtney. He's probably about 15 inches or so. This is a good fish. Nice. Way to go. I'm sorry, little fella. He's 14 and a half, so that is a legal fish. Yay. I thought he was. Nice. Yay. Way to go. First gig flounder, Courtney. He is 14 and a half inches. We just got to measure. 
that's that's okay yeah we try like when you're aiming for them you know this is your first time you want to try to get them like right in here yeah i'm not a flounder gigging expert by by any stretch of the imagination but it that's like the best place to get them you're trying not to hit the meat you know you just want to try to get them in the head but good job how's it feel gigged your first flounder i feel bad <laughs> courtney come on <laughs> this is going to provide a meal for our family i know well we're seeing some fish i scared one off yeah we saw that first one we scared one off we got this one nice courtney has gigged her first flounder we're starting to see some fish maybe we can get on a couple more Fish are nibbling my feet. Are they? Yes. Are they getting you? Ooh. What? I guess that's seaweed. Yeah, that's uh, June grass. It started moving in. Moving in. It's a booger when you're trying to surf fish. Oh, ah, that's a good fish. All right, there he is. All right, all right he's easing off. Dang it. Come on. Come on. Come here. He's out of here. Dang it. Yeah, Dang it. No, it's, no, it's my fault. I, I didn't see him. Dang it. Sorry, that was that was a good fish. Yeah, I, I about stepped on him. Rookie mistake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I'm not a very good flounder gigger. <laughs> and as well, I will say this. I'll, I'll make an excuse that's legitimate. You see the ripple? Yeah, it's hard. It makes it hard to see. We got we got a strong wind. There's ripple on the water, and it's it's hard to see. So when it's, when, it's when it's when it's calm like this, when the wind stops for a second, and that's when we saw that fish that we gigged. Oh, there might be one. Oh, that's trash. But that, yeah, it definitely helps when it's no ripple. Dang, that was, dang it, I'm sorry. Man, <laughs> there's so many of these tiny little baits hitting my legs. See them? All right, all right, come this way, come this way. All right, here. Got him. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. I, I think I can do this. Ooh, I know we got all these little baits around. Yeah, that's a good fish. Good fish. All right. Woo, we got two at least. We got a meal. Yep. He is 15 and a half, maybe 15 three quarters. Woo. All right. Well, we've each gotten a flounder. We've seen uh, we've seen some fish. Yeah. Missed some opportunities, but hey. We're getting somewhere. Heck yeah, fist bump. Teamwork. We got a couple decent flounder last night. Saw several. These are the only two that we got with a couple of subpar gig shots there. This was Courtney's first fish right here. <laughs> and mine, I uh, just made a bad stab there. But that's okay. We'll still be able to get the meat off of them. No, it's no problem. Obviously, I like to try to get them closer to the head up in here that's a that's a better gig shot but we're gonna make some tacos with these guys today this is courtney's first fish and it is it's thick it's uh it's not a very big fish it's only 14 and a half but the the meat on the white side is some of the thickest that i've ever seen usually it's a lot thinner I always start the white side first on flounder. I don't really know why. I watched a video one time and they said that's what they do. <laughs> and maybe it gives you a little bit better stability on each side to start with this one. And then I do the camo side second, but same process, both sides. This is some of the thickest white side fillets I've ever seen. You always get the thicker meat on the camo side here. Just like that. See, I always I catch those bones sometimes. I, I'm still getting all the meat there, but you know, it is what it is. I, I'm not here to show you how to fillet fish. <laughs> Just to have a good time. That's what we're all about. And you can see where we gig this fish, this, that blood in the meat. And, that, and that's part of the reason you want to try to gig them in the head. You don't want to mess up the meat. Also, it kills the fish a little bit quicker if you gig them towards the head and the gills. Two decent white side fillets make perfect tacos.
You stabbed your first flounder last night. Yes. And you were, you were sad about it. It was a little sad moment. What's that? Did you make that? No. My, yes, Mama. Mama made it? Yeah. That's right. Who's on your shirt? Who's that? Who's all that? That's all of my friends. All your friends? That's at a Mickey house. Mickey's house? We're making our mango salsa. And these are the ingredients that are going in it. We've got mango diced up. Courtney's working on some jalapeno. We've got tomatoes and red onion, which this red onion smelled really strong, so we're only using a little bit of that. But we're gonna mix all of this together and also add in a little bit of lime juice. You can add cilantro if you want that, but we we like cilantro, but it's kind of strong. So, But look how pretty, beautiful. I'm seasoning up the fish with the mojo rub. This is such a good seasoning. It's uh, Badia? Hey, we don't need. Is that the brand? Yeah, I, that, so. I, I don't know. Something we just picked up at Publix. But we're just going to season up the fish with it. This is Annalise's two pieces. We're just going to do it real light for her. Get both sides of it. But we're not getting crazy with it because we got a lot of flavors going on in this taco. Here's the finished salsa product. This is the mango salsa. And we've got some tortillas. We're gonna make our tacos. Some meaty piece right there. Is that that's too much? Huge piece. Is that too much? No, so no, that's fine. Back is that, it oh, is that mine? Yeah. No, that's fine. Can you cut it in half and flip one half around so the, the ratio of fish in every bite would be the same? Like this? Yes. There we go. Perfect. Mm. Look how pretty that looks. Mm -hmm. I mean, just. That's enough. That's enough. That's good? That's good. Yeah, That's we want to have enough for all the time. Okay. All right. Well, we got plenty. Okay. Well. And this is aged sharp cheddar? Aged white sharp cheddar. Aged white sharp cheddar, which is very good in this combination. I know a lot of people are going to be like, you don't put cheese on tacos. Oh, no. It's good. But it's good. Ooh, that looks like a good strawberry. Let me see it. Ooh, yeah. That is, that is Let me see it. Mean. Look at that. Let me see the inside. You want all the red oh, you can get. Oh, that is a good strawberry. That's a good one right there. Look mm -hmm. at your little meal. You got your mac and cheese, your fish, straws, strawberries. Almost had spasberries. Spasberries. And look, look how good that looks. Look, that is so mm. excited. I think it turned out pretty good. All right, you want to try? Yeah. yeah mom's. mom's is mom's huge. Mom's got two. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so big. I can't wrap it up. Mmm, it's so good. Mm. Now we this have it. Good. We, is that good? Oh, yeah. Mm. How is it? Oh, it feels good. Honest opinion. Oh mm -hmm. man. You, you, you can you can bash it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm. Is it as good as the pompano tacos or same? Mm. Different. I think it's just as good. Just mm -hmm. as good. Yeah. Mom, who do we think is this is good? Is that good strawberry? Thank and we've got you. some Topo Chico. We're, I'm trying to cut back on the sodas, so this uh, a little easier for me to drink. Oh, no. mm. All right, I'm gonna take a bite, I'm ready. All right, I'm ready. I love fish tacos. This is such a good recipe. Should be good. Is that good, Daddy? It is delicious. Very good. I think, I mean, it tastes great. I think I like the texture of the pompano in the taco a little bit better. But a flounder, I mean, of course, flounders. Super good fish. Oh, yeah. We're going to finish up our fish tacos. Thank you so much for watching. Just got back from South Florida. I don't know what order you'll see these Thank videos. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I've got several videos that I filmed before we went to South Florida. So I don't know what order you'll see these. But this is the first video we filmed since we've been back. Um, you look at Bell and... Put that phone behind the bell. You want to show Bell? There's Bell. We do get comments about Bell. Do we? We don't ever really show Bell, but like she'll be scurrying around in the background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she shows up. Yeah, well, she's our 10 year old. We, we get comments girl. about mom, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I'm Mimi's always here. wanting the great food, so I'm always going to smooch as much as I can. Smooch. 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 Hello Beast welcome back to the channel. Getting into something that I have not done in a long time. 
and that's going to be some flounder gigging it is getting to be that time of year we're getting late summer early fall a lot of flounder hanging around in the surf zone so in the morning in the wee hours of the morning i'm going to go out to the beach and walk and see if i can flounder gig i've done this some inshore from a boat but i really enjoy going to the beach and just walking the beach and looking for flounder it's such a fun experience getting to see everything at night and the interactions of the wildlife in their element at nighttime. But I'm gonna go over the gear that I use while I'm flounder gigging. Um, before I do go out and make that decision, a couple of things we're looking for. Uh, I am looking for very low winds. I, it needs to be as low as possible, maybe a light north wind, because on the Gulf side, any kind of ripple on the water makes it kind of difficult to see. So if you've got a, any kind of wind rippling up the water, you can still see, you can get by with some of that, but the less is more, you know, the better you're gonna be able to see with the least amount of wind or a little bit of a north wind. Of course, you do want it very calm as well. You can't go out there if it's rough or if you have a lot of swells. Uh, any bubbles that wash over, like with the waves crashing, it's gonna stir up the bottom and create bubbles so you can't see through the bubbles and stirring up the bottom of the sand just makes it very difficult to see. So if you have like really short sets, like if, if they're coming in every two, three seconds, it's gonna be very difficult and frustrating to see. So you wanna have those swells spaced out or like minimal swell so that you can see. Cause we're, I'm walking very, very close to the sand. So very close to the beach. So I'm looking at that. I've got windy. I'm showing you the conditions that I actually went out in on this video and that's pretty ideal conditions. And that's what we're looking for. So before I go, I'm checking that, making sure everything looks good. Also with the tide, I wanna make sure that we're not really at high tide and that we're not at low tide. I wanna be in between. I do prefer like an incoming tide because it's gonna make these flounder a little bit more comfortable hanging in those pockets up close to the beach. When the tide's going out, sometimes I feel like they're trying to get out of there because that water's decreasing and they're wanting to get to deeper water. But as long as that tide's coming in, makes them a little bit more comfortable. They're a little bit more willing to hang around in that water because they know more is coming. So I do like an incoming tide, but I try to make sure that I'm not too close to the high tide because I don't want it so deep that I'm wading in really deep water and also that I have more water to look through to see these flounder. So try to space that out. So I went uh, about at the middle of that tide cycle right before it started coming back in pretty good. Okay, and we don't have like a big tide swing right now anyway when I went. So pretty ideal conditions, low wind, calm surf, good tidal movement, and the tide movement is what I want it to be at night, which is important because uh, when you're flounder gigging, you're using lights, it's, be it's better to do it at night, obviously. Uh, you can do it during the day, I guess, but I've never tried it and uh, I don't know how effective it would be. But this is the equipment that I'm using. I've got a flounder light. It's got the light down here on the bottom. It's got a PVC pipe with a little holder. Um, this one was made by Coastal Flounder Lights. Um, I picked this up at a tackle store several years ago. We do sell some at Beach Bum Outdoors. It's not this brand, but very, very similar. It does have the wires coming off here, and it's got the two uh, connections here that you connect to a 12 volt battery. And once you plug it in, boom, light is shining, pretty simple. Um, what I do here with this, I, I'm carrying the light, I take my 12 volt battery and I slap it inside a backpack and I've got those leads going down into the backpack carrying that. This does get kind of heavy, so keep that in mind. Also, if you're like, what I'd like to do is take a cooler with me, like a soft cooler and attach it to my backpack to put the flounder in. Here's a tip. If you're ever doing this on the Gulf side, uh, you gotta be aware of sharks. Um, I haven't run into any personally, but I know some folks that have had their flounder on stringers before walking around on the Gulf side and have had to deal with sharks. And I just don't wanna deal with that. So I like to put them inside of something. It does make your, your load a little heavier. Uh, so make sure you're prepared because you're gonna be walking a lot if you do this. You're covering a lot of ground. I mean, miles, okay? Like this is not an easy thing. It's not always that you get out there and you're seeing flounder every 10 feet. You gotta cover some ground. So you're gonna be walking a lot with a heavy load on there. So be prepared for that. It, it is some work to do this. Some people call it cheating. Uh, but it is still a lot of work to get out there and gig these flounder. The gig that I have, uh, this is a bamboo gig. Um, it was actually a buddy of mine, and uh, he asked if he wanted it back. He was like, yeah, I'm good, I don't really need it. Um, if you do need it, Dusty, let me know. 
willing to give this back to you if you happen to be watching. Um, I don't know if this is like a frog gig or what, but uh, it, it's pretty nice. It's, uh, it's rusted right now, but very good. It's got the uh, uh, what are these barbs on here so that uh, when you do stab that flounder, it hangs on to them pretty good. It's actually pretty difficult to get them off even with your foot, but I don't know how long it is. Um, this one's probably, uh, if I had to guess, nine feet, 10 feet, maybe. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need something that long, but this is a pretty nice gig. Um, you could use this one in a boat, I believe. Uh, it's, it's long enough that you could. You probably could go get by with a lot shorter if you're just walking and doing this in the surf, which I do prefer and do enjoy. This is a really fun thing to do. If you vacation down here and you happen to get a house on the beach, this is a fun thing to do with your family. So I would encourage you to explore this option. Um, obviously you gotta have the right conditions and it kinda has to be the right time of year. You can do it in the summertime pretty much anytime, um, but even if you don't get to gig flounder, just having the flounder equipment, the flounder lights and going out there at night, as long as the water's clear and calm, you can see a lot of wildlife. It's really cool, it's really neat, but you do need to be careful. You gotta be mindful of sharks. You're gonna see a ton of stingrays, so make sure you're watching your step. Good news is, you fortunately have a bright light and you can see pretty good, so just watch where you're stepping. But a uh, really fun thing to do with your family. I have not done this with Annalise yet. My daughter, she is six. Uh, as she gets a little bit older, probably something that I'll take her on just because it's just so much fun getting out there and seeing everything at night. It's so calm. You got the beach to yourself. Really fun family activity. So I would encourage you to do it. But I'm gonna hit the beach in the morning in the wee hours, and we'll see if we can find us some flounder, gig a few, bring them home, cook them up. All right, we are walking and looking for some flatties. The water is dingier than I expected. I was at the beach today, not fishing, but just having a good time. We took the boat out, enjoyed ourselves, and the water was pretty clear, but it is relatively dingy right now. So I'm surprised to see that. And uh, it's a little deep. And of course, the deeper you are, the harder it is to see. So right now I'm just walking the edge, seeing if we can see anything just right next to the beach. Flounder will hang just right on this lip right here a lot of the time. Okay, I moved beaches because the first beach, the water was really dingy. It's a little dingy here, but not as bad. I can actually see. There's a stingray, two, uh, just one, one stingray right there. Lots of rays, you will see those. Let's see, what's right here? Nothing, no? Okay. There's a needlefish. They like the light evidently, coming right to it. I just stepped on one, dang it, dang it. Just stepped on a flounder, it felt like a good one. Ah, <laughs> oh, I, I almost was about to say, I feel like I'm gonna step on one because it's kind of deep and if they're buried good, they're very hard to see when it's deep like this. He was right in one of these ruts here stepped right on him. Dang it. Got one right here. Buried down a little bit. He is not legal though. We're gonna tap him. That's probably, see how, you probably can't even see him on the, you might, yeah, you can kind of see him on the GoPro it looks like. I'm gonna spook him, he's a little guy. That's how I stepped on one, I didn't see it, but just right, there he goes, right in that rut. <clears throat> so our first flounder, I feel good now. We saw one. 
not a legal fish. Stepped on one, so should be some around. Just gotta find one that's worth stabbing here. Nice crab right there. Speckled crab. Needlefish. Get out of here, needlefish. What are you doing? Oh, here's another one. Looks like one right there. Oh, that's a big one too. Oh my gosh. He fooled me. That's a gigger, if I can get him. Got him. Got him. There we go. First fish. Heck yeah! He tricked me. I didn't think it was gonna be that big. Whew, that water coming out of, uh, <laughs> out of my cooler is cold. Uh, that is a southern flounder. Most of the ones we find out here are the gulf flounder. But that's a southern. I spooked him. And then got a second chance on him. But check that guy out right there. Nice fish. Probably about 15 inches. Solid. Yeah, he is pushing 16, about 16 inch fish. Nice. Not too bad of a gig shot. I'm not like a professional by any means, but you want to get them in the head and the face, preserving as much meat as possible. And you can see I got them like right there, right behind the eyes. But nice fish, uh, about 15 and three quarters. Good, good one to start the day, the night, the evening. All right, we got one on the board. Sweet, oh, here's another fish right here. He's a little guy. We'll jump him with the safe end here. There he goes. All right, seeing some fish. That is good. We've seen three already, gigged one. Already off to a great evening. Stepped on one. <laughs> oh, here's one. Yeah, yeah. Right in front of that stingray. He's close. I don't think, nah, he's not a keeper. There, he's an off there. He sees me. There he goes. He's friendly. He let me touch him a lot. We got a stingray right here. Try to spook him off. Get out of here, stingray. One right here. He doesn't look too big. There he goes. He might have been legal. He was close. He was close. But we, we're gonna let that one roll. That's the rule. You wanna just know that it's legal. And I was uncertain on that one. Right over here, another little guy. Buried down. There he goes. Shoo! Another fish right here. Man, there's a bunch of flounder around. A lot of little guys. Yeah, another small guy. Right here. There he goes. Seeing a lot of fish. Oh, yep, that was. <laughs> I couldn't even tell. He might have been legal too, daggum. I mean, I was looking at him, but I was like, man, I don't know. I don't know if that's fish or not. And I couldn't tell how big he was. Didn't want to stab anything. Just saw like three or four fish. 
right in this little area. There's one, two. Is that two fish? Nah, just one. Another small guy. Look at this. Flounder everywhere. So I'm looking, when I'm doing this, I'm looking for their backs raised up. Kind of makes a different little spot in the contour of the bottom. Or their eyes. Their eye, if their eyes are not buried, you'll see them. And it's a little bit easier to see them on the edges. Like when you are scanning on the edge of your light, a lot of times you'll kind of catch something that looks different, looks out of place. You're like, oh. Woohoo. Oh, stingray. Okay, easy, buddy. There's one. It's been a minute since I've seen one. There he goes. Little fella. Lots of little guys. They're so fast. They spook off like that. Any big ones hanging around? He's looking right at me. Ah, he's close. Let's get a better look at him. Yeah. He's decent. Man, they are so camouflaged. They're so good at that. There he is. Look at him. He's close. Not a bad fish, not a bad fish. Just want you a little bit bigger. He might have been like right on 14. Cool to see. Here's another one. Let's see ya. He's a little. There he goes. <laughs> Didn't even let me touch him. It's weird you get in areas where they get a little bit more concentrated. You'll go through a stretch of nothing. And honestly, I can't really even pinpoint any kind of difference. Oh, it's a butterfly ray. I thought I about gigged it. I saw the eyes. I thought it was a giant flounder buried up. Oh my gosh, that scared me. Big butterfly ray. Bunch of stingrays right here. Might be some flatties mixed in. Trying to be sneaky. The big butterfly ray about got gigged. I thought. It was a giant flounder. Woo! You about got it, buddy. Here's another one. Whoop, there he goes. Not a keeper. Struggling to find ones that I'm confident in gigging. Here's a guy. He's small, small, small. There he goes. Got a stingray. Got to get him out of here. What gets me is I'll get distracted by a stingray. I'll see a stingray and I'm like, oh, I need to check that out, see if it's a flounder. And I kind of get locked in on it. And then I'll end up stepping on a flounder. But I've seen a bunch. Seen a bunch of flounder tonight.
All right, here's one. All you can see is his eyes. But he's got a big old back. Hiding out in some deep water. We're gonna take this one. He looks good. Woo! Just need these waves to calm down. See you, buddy. Another southern. Ugh. Woo. Woo. Easy, buddy. Easy, buddy. All right. Flounder. Can you see? Flounder number two. This one is 14 and a half. He was a little close. I was pretty sure he was legal. That was a, that was a risky stab, but 14 and a half inch fish, solid. We'll take them. Another Southern though. They've got, uh, this one has a lot of meat on them. His back was sticking up really high. Out of the sand, woo! Kicking sand on me, ugh! So that's what uh, prompted me to take him. Flounder number two going in, making progress. Spooked that one off. Didn't think it was big enough. Oh, here's one right here. About to step on that one. It looks kind of small. Not bad. Some of these. They're just like right on the edge. Kind of like that uh, 14 and a half of gigs. Oh. I knew there had to be one in this hole and it, it just darted off. I didn't even see it. I just saw the, the trail. That's a good one. We're gonna take him. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, easy buddy, easy buddy. Heck yeah. All right. He was just chilling. It's harder to, like that was a little bit deeper. It's harder to hit him right in the head when they're deeper like that. This one looks about 15. Solid, solid. Another Southern. All the ones I'm gigging are Southern. Break dancing. Throwing sand everywhere. Um, probably a lot of the ones I'm letting go are the Gulf flounder. He is actually 15 and a half. Yeah. Nice, good fish right here. Nice fit. Uh, I was trying to show him to you. Easy buddy, easy buddy, easy buddy. All three flounders so far have been the southern. I uh, can't really get all the sand off of them. And he keeps doing that. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> uh, if we can get a golf, I'll show you the difference. But that's mostly what I catch hook and line out here are the golf flounder, not, not the southerns. But cool fish. We've got our flounder haul here. No giants, but three solid fish. Had a great time last night walking the beach. Got to see so many flounder and able to bring these three home, which will be delicious. Uh, this style of fishing is, uh, there's a lot of opinions on this. Some people think or feel or believe that this is cheating and uh, disagree with the tactics. Great way to have some fun and harvest some fish. It is still a lot of work. It's not like a lot of people are like, oh, that's too easy. Trust me, if you've ever done this, you know this is not an easy way to get fish. Hook and line, obviously, I would say can be a little bit more challenging sometimes, but the amount of work involved hunting these fish down is still a pretty fair chase trying to put food on the table.
But we're gonna get this guy cleaned up. Uh, I've cleaned flounder a couple of different ways on this channel. Typically, it works okay. I always start white side first. That's the first one that I start my cuts on. But most of the time you can just fillet this like any other fish. Just make your first cut and then outline the top here. just cutting in a little bit they do have like all these little tiny little bones up here like all the way down so I, it does make it a little difficult because you are getting caught on there some but that meat that we're kind of cutting through that looks kind of weird not eating that anyway uh that's just kind of um a little weird section some people use that for for bait there we go cut through once we got that initial cut we can just angle our knife all the way along these bones here it's pretty easy from here cut down and over that backbone angle that knife down they have a pretty thin rib cage you can pop through that or cut around it either way it's up to you We're gonna just cut around those rib bones right there. And we are separated. See, even though those initial cuts were kind of weird with these bones, we didn't lose any meat. Like this meat right here that we're leaving on there, we're not gonna eat that anyway. We're just gonna peel that away. So you kind of have a buffer a little bit and actually the pieces of meat that we want, we're all good. We got all of that. So there is a little bit of um, forgiveness with a flounder. The opposite side what you can do if you want some people prefer to clean fish this way you can cut down this lateral line which is a little harder to find sometimes on the camo side here but we're just going to cut right down that lateral line on that backbone and what that allows you to do is now you can come in from the top so that's basically like the same cut you would make here on the top, but now you're on the bottom, so you can start there. And you can cut, angle your knife down and just ease that meat away. So this is just personal preference. You can clean it how you like, whatever's easiest for you. Try not to cut yourself. I touched my thumb there but it didn't cut me so just easing that away so now we are opened up Get that separated there and now we can access this top loin same way just angled down along that backbone. So you're just doing the loins separately. I prefer to clean fish kind of the same way. I'm more confident in those cuts. Doing this is a little different for me. But either way is effective. Separate that, there we go. So now we've got our two loins on the camo side already separated. And then all we gotta do here is just separate the meat. Pretty simple to do. This is the thinner side on that white side. Whoop. There we go. And you can just pull this apart if you want separate it and that actually is the pin bones separating from it itself so two nice loins there will be delicious we've got our flounder all filleted up and ready to go we're gonna make us uh, some fish tacos which we have not made these tacos in a long time or at least this way and we're gonna season it up with some mojo 
rub, very good for taco, fish tacos, and of course, your basic salt and pepper. And then we're gonna cook it in good old butter. <laughs> oh yeah, good for you. Uh, Annalise over here and Mimi are working on the cheese. They're uh, getting that all grated up for us over there. <laughs> and eating a little bit of it. Courtney, uh, this is your station over here. She's dicing up some vegetables. We've got tomato, onion, jalapeno, mango. I think that's it, right? Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. We're gonna For put that salsa. together and make a little mango salsa. So it's gonna be super good. Uh, but I'm gonna get this seasoned up. We're gonna cook it on the skillet and then uh, we're gonna put together our tacos. Should be delicious. All right, everything's ready. Courtney's gonna build us a taco. Show us how this works. Okay. Flour shell. Tortilla. Flour shell, yeah. <laughs> oh, I need a thingy. A fork, or should I use the what you ate with? Cook uh, you, can, you can get a fork. And I probably won't like it. Ah. Should I put two fillets on there? As much as you want. Okay, I want two. Okay. Next, I think I'll add my cheese. Oh, do your cheese first? I'm gonna do my cheese okay. first, which we didn't say. It's sharp white American. Cheddar. It's cheddar? It's cheddar. Oh, sharp white cheddar. That's what you told my me to do. Oh, I did, sorry. <laughs> okay. Mm. You have to have a hefty amount of salsa. Salsa. Because you definitely want all the flavors. It's a good color too. Yeah. Makes it look very nice and pretty. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Ooh. That's a legit looking taco there, Courtney. Yep. I'm ready. Alright. Annalise, what are you wearing? Very pretty. You want to do a twirl? Well. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Courtney. I get to go first. Mm. Logging food over there. Yeah. <laughs> you always go first. I do, I guess, don't I? Okay. Should you go first this time? Not either. No? Okay, I'll go first. I don't want anything to fall out. It's kind of fat. Yeah. I made it a little too fat. Yeah, that's maybe. like a burrito over there. You want to see my bite? Mm. Look at that. Yeah. Flounder taco. Mm. Mm. Is it good? Mm, so good. Is it too spicy? Mm-mm. No, it's been a long time since we've had this, like this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It takes too much. Yeah, we've been doing street tacos a lot. Mm -hmm. Mimi? Oh, yes, because I can't wait. Here we go. Saving the best for last That's year. right. Oh. Here we go. I might end up putting this on. I'm the best. Mm-hmm. Of course. Ah, oh, well, thank you, but mm. far from it. Mm. How is it? Mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm, it's delicious. Oh, wow. Falling apart there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. Very nice. I love it. Mm-hmm. Annalise. Your turn. We, we just did salt and pepper on your flounder. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just teasing her. You I only to... like salt and pepper. I know. Well, I you... can't stand the... You don't like anything spicy. That was it. Good. You're eating flounder. Salt and peppery. I like the flounder. You do? <laughs> That's good. Super mild. Well, it was fun. Um, you know how dad caught these? Do you even know? No. I stabbed them. <laughs> yep. With something kind of similar to your fork, but a lot longer. Mm -hmm. It's called gigging. I'll take you someday, but... Uh, you might need to be a little bit older. Yeah, and you don't want to accidentally gig a foot. <laughs> gig a foot. Gig a foot. Mm. Not a gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Gonna try it. Beautiful. Solid. <laughs> Hello Beach Bums, welcome back to the channel. I am on a mission to dial in flounder fishing from the beach in our area. I've been spending a decent amount of time this year really trying to hone that in. I'm also doing some flounder gigging because I feel like you just get a lot of data. Even if you're not necessarily gigging fish, it just really tells you what where these fish kind of hang out or like to be and what size fish are there and just gives you a lot of information. So I've been hitting several different beaches 
and I've been gigging, I've been ponder fishing, and really just trying to hone in the data on like what species are there because we have two different kinds, the Southern and the Gulf, the size of the fish, where they're kind of hanging, what features they like, I'm really trying to dial that in. So that's kind of the focus in today's video. So I'm gonna bring you guys along as I'm documenting this process. I think it'll be helpful for all of us if you are interested in catching more flounder from the beach, especially in our area. So stick around. I think you'll definitely learn something in this video. Update on the boat. I did get a call back from the insurance company on the claim. I can either give them the boat and they take it and they just write me a check for 9,000 or I can keep the boat and they're going to write me a check for 7,000 in order to try and replace the motor. Um, I don't know if that's going to be quite enough to get like a new motor. I am going to talk to a couple of marine shops and see if that's feasible, if there's options for me uh, to be able to replace the motor because I would like to still have the boat. I don't know that getting a check for 9,000, I don't know because it was a pretty inexpensive boat. I got a decent deal on this boat uh, from a buddy uh, with having the spot lock controlling motor, which I feel is very important and a boat that's reliable and runs like this one that's as old as it is i just don't feel like there's many options out there i've kind of, I always kind of look at like boats for sale and finding one for nine grand seems kind of tough so i would like to keep a boat and uh, i don't i don't want to finance one i just want to pay cash so we'll see what happens i'm gonna dig into this comment below let me know your thoughts uh, how should i approach it can i get a motor for uh, i had a 60 horsepower yamaha on there can I get a motor for seven grand and get it put on there? Like a new one or a decent one? Let me know. Or should I just try to find a boat for nine grand? That's pretty comparable. I feel like that one's kind of hard. But if you have any thoughts or ideas or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. But uh, we're gonna hit the beach and uh, do a little flounder recon. All right, we're out here. I just got started. Woo! Waves are a little big. I just saw a flounder though. Oh crap! Oh, dang. They are way big uh, for this. There's like no wind, it's it's calm, but uh, oh gosh. Waves are relentless. Um, there was a flounder here and I lost him. I don't know if he swam off. There was a flounder just right over there. He looked like he might have been legal, close to it anyway. There's a mangrove. That's a mangrove snapper right there. Right in front of me. That's pretty cool. Not ever seen one of those before. Doing this. I have come over to the base side. It is too daggum rough on the Gulf side right now. Oh, there might be, there's a flounder right there. Look at there, we just got started. He looks little, but he's laid up right there. Can you see him? We're gonna bump him. That's encouraging. Shoo! He's fast, okay, all right, well, maybe there'll be some around. Take it slow. I already saw a flounder on the Gulf side as soon as I walked out there, even though it was rough. I was able to get a glimpse of one. I feel like there's probably a ton over there, but unless it calms down, tide is going out from now until morning. So maybe if the water gets a little more shallow even if there are some swells, maybe it won't be quite, quite as bad. Oh, there goes, a, that was a big one. He spooked off way out there. Dang. He did not let me even get close. I just happened to catch a glimpse of him. As soon as I saw him, he he darted off. There's one. 
Took a minute. Another little guy. Right there. There he goes. It's two little guys. The uh, one big guy that I saw, he was way, way too smart. And he darted off long before I even got close to him. Got one over here. He's close. <sighs> nah, not quite. We're not going to take him. He, he might be like right at it. There he goes. Seeing some fish. That's good. I am back on the gulf side. Let's see how this goes. We do still have some waves. They don't seem to be quite as massive. So hopefully they'll kind of die down and stay died down. Stingray right there. Go. Get, 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 get. Have seen some flounder. Saw that first one on the Gulf side and then saw a few on the Bay side. The swells are not helpful. They, uh, water is so clear, but the swells are stirring everything up. There's a whiting right there, hanging around with me. Here's a flatty on the Gulf side. He's a small guy. A lot of those around. Bump him. There he goes. All right, well, we saw one. In spite of the conditions. One right here. There he goes. Right by the beach. Seeing some fish. Tonight, just nothing I can stab oh there he goes he, he's not as big as I thought thought he was going to be a good one there he goes well I could not find any keepers gigging found plenty of small ones so we're out here today this morning I was gigging last night I've not gone to sleep I started gigging at 1 a.m. it's now like almost 8 o'clock I went home regrouped I've got the Fred slam shady proved to be very successful last time I came out so I wanted to come try it again this morning I did apply some doctor's use scent and I do have my flounder set up. I've got the Terramar Double X Shimano seven and a half foot rod. Very light action. Perfect for flounder. 10 pound braid. And then I've got this 3000 size 13 fishing reel. Great setup for throwing light lures and sensitive biting fish, such as the flounder. Gonna be focusing on pockets. We'll try right here. A little bit of one. Yeah, this rod throws so much better than the rod I was using last time. This is just a better setup for throwing light lures. I did bring pants. I got them in my backpack. I didn't know flies would be bad. It's kind of low winds. I would expect them to be out here, but so far so good but I've got pants oh well, there's one right there one as soon as I started talking about it just one we'll see what happens they start getting obnoxious we'll slap the pants on there's a fish there we go didn't take long 
got him. Getting bit by, ooh, oh, pulling some drag, pulling some drag, he might be good. Let's see him. There we go. Nice little golf. Flounder off to a good start. Getting bit by some flies. He's a fatty. Uh, I did not bring anything to measure with. So if they're close, not gonna keep them. And he's close. But solid first fish. He might be legal, but we're gonna let him go. Beautiful fish. We'll get him back. See you, buddy. So many flounder out here right now. Ah, ladyfish. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Leave me alone. I've got a cooler that I'm carrying around with my backpack. My soft cooler. A little bit of ice. So if we do get a good keeper, throw it in here take it home. Okay. The ladyfish have infiltrated. We're going to move on. There's uh, plenty of feature on this beach right now. So we'll go hit another pocket since we pulled one out of there. All this right here could hold flounder, but we're skipping it. It's uh, just not real feature dense. I want those nice rips, those holes, those pockets, those deep troughs right next to the bar. Uh, this is just kind of like a big open area. So nothing real fancy. There we go. Got him little guy real little surprised you got that buddy that is a pretty colored golf flounder right there he's just an itty bitty fella look at that so light colored and pretty get you back <laughs> flounder number two first one would have probably been pretty close to legal if not like right on it 14 inches that one's not even close flounder are one of the best opportunities that we've got in the surf right now especially after the sun comes up most any other opportunities this time of year once that sun gets up kind of limited you can do some set rig fishing. There are some pompano around. I've still yet to catch a southern flounder on hook and line. They've all been gulf. So I've had a few people ask me, how do I know how to set the hook on a flounder? When you're working your lure, jigging it, you feel like as long as you have the right equipment and you're using light braid, you're using a sensitive rod, you'll feel a, a small like thump in most cases. Just pretty subtle, not aggressive. And when you feel that little thump, I just ease up. Oh, that feels like a ladyfish trying to pick it up. Something's got it. Something's trying to grab it right there. Uh, but when you feel that little thump, I just ease up on the rod and if I feel weight, kind of like I'm hung up or stuck on something, usually that's a flounder. And so I'll just ease up, confirm that there's something there, and then I'll set the hook. Usually they're holding that in their mouth and you get a nice good hook set on them. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. 
kill them all. Let's see ya. He's a little fella. Felt good on the hook set. Wait a second. Oh, still, still golf. I thought it was a baby southern. Chalk another little baby golf louder. Get you back. Thanks, buddy. Flounder number three. They are around. But theme continues. Same, same story as the gigging last night. Small ones. Oh. Oh, yeah. There's like these, uh, a lot of little baby pompano. Oh, what is that? That was chasing it in. What was that? There's like a lot of little baby pompano and they keep tapping at it. They're aggressive. All right, I did put the pants on. Flies have been getting increasingly worse. Did reapply some Dr. Juice. Got another nice little bar structure with some depth in front of it. See if we can find us a nice keeper flounder. That's kind of the goal. There we go. I saw him come up and eat it. <laughs> that was kind of cool. There we go, another golf. That is what we got. I was watching this one track it. Another little golfy on the uh, tailless Fred lure here. Get you back. It's fun watching them chase it. And then just whack it. Fred's disappointed. He's hanging out over here. He's waiting for a fish. I'm not giving you any flounder, Fred. Oh. Fish. First cast, this spot. Little guy. He came out. I think this is our fifth flounder of the day. They are running extra small today. It's okay. Still finding them, still getting them. So pretty. Another golf. Still blanking on the Southerns. Oh gosh. Oh, ladyfish. Dang it. Dang it. Thought a flounder uh, smoked it. There we go. He's on the beach, so that, that counts as a catch if, if we want it to. There we go. Oh, what is that? Is that a cobia? No way. They're uh that's cool. A little baby cobia, not a remora. I was throwing at, uh, I don't know if they're black drum or redfish. Oh, oh, he, he's out of here. Should be good. Little baby cove. Get out of here. Go get big. Go, go. This should be good. All right. There was uh, like two black drum i don't know where they went oh that might be them let's see well i lost the black drum because evidently there was a little baby cobia hanging out with it there's a fish 
There we go. Come on. Nah. Another little guy. Man. Can't get past them. Another, another baby golf. The future for golf flounder looking bright. I was at a different beach the last time I came out and caught the bigger golf flounder. I caught a few that were legal size. And as you can see, that's not always the case. It's hard to come by those legal size gold flounder. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, really documenting a lot of data from flounder. Really figuring this out. I think, uh, I think we're gonna have it honed in. I at least do know now uh, what beaches are holding larger fish and, and different species of fish. Um, I, I, I'm not necessarily giving you that information, I guess, but, uh, you know, that's the fun part, you know, to figure that part out on your own, but it is variable. So I am putting in the work, trying to figure out what beaches are holding what, and I'm sure that's fluid anyway, that could change tomorrow. But for now, I have a pretty good handle as of today, what beaches are holding what species and different size fish. Wild bird. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you stay bummy. Hello, Beach Bums. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Matthew Isbell, and this is my channel, Bama Beach Bum. If you notice, I'm not wearing my normal sunglasses, not wearing the water lens today. I've got my glasses on with clip-on sunglasses. I cannot wear my contacts right now. I'm trying to heal from a corneal ulcer. Not fun if you don't know about it. I don't recommend it. That'd be a hard pass on that opportunity if it ever presents itself in your life. Definitely not fun. So hopefully we can get full healing. I've got blurred vision in this eye, even with the corrective lenses. So I can't see very well. And these glasses are not polarized. So like, can't really see much of what's going on out here, but we're fishing. <laughs> can't stop me from fishing, that's for sure. Looking for flounder today. I've got a Slam Shady on. Just gonna bounce it hit where I can. We've got high tide rolling up later this evening. So as the afternoon progresses, we should be getting more water in here, but I'm gonna be looking for the pockets best I can tell, because I can't see very well with what I got going on. My vision sucks right now. But not keeping any fish today, I did not bring anything to keep fish. It is a hassle anytime I'm walking the beach for flounder. I'll do it sometimes, I'll carry a cooler with me, but not today. We're just enjoying. It's beautiful weather, it's fall, and seeing if we can locate some larger flounder. Last time I came out here, I caught five, but they were all undersized. So looking for some bigger fish today, possibly. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to fishing. Water clarity looks amazing. If there are any cruising reds, it'd be a great day to see them, but uh, man, I'm just, I'm struggling Not with the blurred vision and the lack of polarized lenses. So if you see anything on camera that I miss, don't judge me. I'm walking up to my first spot that looks pretty good. We got a deep drop off. Uh, you might can see it in the camera. I can still see it well enough to tell. There is a bar right here with a deep pocket up next to it, kind of in this little elbow right here. That is classic flounder setup right there. So we're gonna pitch this in there. A little windy today, but it's coming out of the north, which is why it's so calm. Oh, I just got a hit. Something's trying to pick it up. Oh, I don't know what that was. There's a fish. That might be a flounder. Oh, there goes a black drum cruising right here. I think that's a black drum. About to bring this little flounder over him. <laughs> I didn't even phase him. 
little flounder. Oh, there he goes. He just darted off. I was going to try to sight cast that black drum if uh, I didn't spook him. First flounder of the day, same story as last time, and it is a little guy. I need you to, oh, there we go. <laughs> he is tiny. A lot of these little guys around. Pretty guy. We'll get you back. All right, well, first fish of the day. Not going to complain about that. That's target species. But we, I'm, I'm hoping for some bigger fish, you know, legal fish out here in the surf. Okay, so the classic flounder setup has produced one so far. Let's see if there's any bigger fish hanging out in this pocket here. Oh, there's another one. There we go. There's a fish. Oh yeah, that one feels better. This is a great setup right here for these fish. Still another little guy. He might be a little bit bigger, but yeah, he is. Still small. <laughs> we are the uh, tiny, oh, there he goes. Tiny flounder pounder right here. There he goes right there. All right, that's two. It still feels good. Like even those little ones, it feels good. You can feel that initial little thud. It's good to see that. It's good to see the abundance of little fish in the surf. Flounder have struggled. Population in our area for a long time. And over the last few years, I would say they have made a strong comeback. Numbers have been great. Um, you can have a lot of success inshore, out here on the beach. Just, uh, they've really started to come back hard and strong. I think a lot of it does have to do with the conservation efforts. They've done a lot of great tagging programs, studying these fish. They've changed the regulations. Really, I feel like they've done a great job managing the species. They've done some uh, hatchery programs where they breed fish and release them state of Alabama has a pretty good program for wildlife resources. So I'm trying to cover this spot pretty well. I'm spending a lot of time. I'm not moving quickly because there were two, two flounder here already. So we know it's holding fish. Oh, that might have been one on there. It might have hit it as soon as it dropped. Let's see if he comes back for it. He might be on. There we go. Got him. Yep. Oh, he came off. Dang it. I don't know if that was a big one. That one hit it as soon as it dropped down. Lost that one. But like I said, we're still in the same spot. I'm still trying to cover as much of this area as possible because there could be more fish here and you just got to get that lure right over their face. Oh. There we go. Got another. That was a real subtle hit. A <laughs> little guy. Man, there's just so many little ones. Like, what is up? Let's see, this is another gulf. Yeah, another gulf flounder. Haven't seen a southern yet out here. Pretty. They have some really cool markings on them. They are all about the same size. Might try a little bit longer in this pocket. Definitely some fish. Caught three, had four bites. Don't know if that was the same fish that it dropped just a second ago. But they are all small. Where, where's your daddy? When you're flounder fishing the beach, it is very helpful to understand the high percentage areas because obviously there's so much water out here. If you just know what you're looking at and can un understand better where those fish will normally hang out, you can have so much more success a lot quicker. It's hard out here just covering water and casting blind. 
So these little deeper pockets, these elbows, you know, where that bar curves back out into deeper water. Those are always great. Where are the big flounder? I've caught eight now out here in the surf between my last two flounder outings and all of them have been undersized. Oh, someone's trying to pick it up. Oh, there's a fish. He's got it. Oh yeah, come on. Be a little bit bigger. Doesn't feel like a giant. Maybe he's got some more weight behind him. There he is. Dad gum, flounder number four. Well, we're whacking them. They are stacked up in this pocket. Put you back. But they are tiny. All right, we're going to move. Thank you, little elbow. You produce. Just not the right size. <laughs> Still rocking the same Slam Shady on a quarter ounce jig head, 17 pound fluorocarbon leader. Oh, that one feels good. Oh gosh. Dang it. How did we miss that one? That one felt solid. It was there. All right, we need to get you to eat again, buddy. That was, it pulled my skirt down, so I'm assuming it just did not have the hook in its mouth. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. Come on. Not big. That other one felt decent. We're getting smaller. <laughs> Itty bitty guy, all right, there he goes. Man, they're so small. That first fish was, was way heavier. I needed to come back for it. Oh, good thing. There's a fish. Oh yeah, that's a better fish. That's gotta be a better fish. Slam Shady missing the tail. It, still not a giant. Bigger, <laughs> but still small, but a bigger fish. Golly, man, they are just stacked in here, these little guys. Biggest of the day, and he's still not uh, not legal. Oh, there you go, slipping out of my hands. I'm trying to show them to you, but they're not letting me. Not today. That was the biggest one so far, and it was probably 10, 11 inches. trying to find that bigger fish again so this section I I just started working the bar and this is just a section of the bar there's really no standout feature right here these flounder could be all up and down this bar just in random spots I'm determined to find a legal fish that has become the challenge here. Find a flounder, no problem. There's plenty of them. That one tricked me. He had it. If you want to learn how to catch small flounder, stay tuned. <laughs> I got you covered. Definitely recommend braided fishing line if you're going to flounder fish because you want to be able to feel anything 
that little thud when they bite you want to know I thought if I didn't bring my cooler I'd be catching legal fish that was kind of the thought process behind it today because I brought it last time and of course only caught small ones like I have today but that uh that strategy has not paid off it's still fun it's still cool to come out to the beach have a target in mind something you want to catch and you can accomplish that goal and I know a lot of you are gonna complain that I'm reeling reeling in over the shallow water yes flounder could definitely be hanging in, in any of this but I'm really focusing in on the high percentage water that deeper pocket up next to the bar those deeper holes that is where I'm focusing my efforts I'm not wasting a lot of time just covering all of this shallow water you can do it there's probably some fish there but I just feel like it's so much more time consuming so like once I get out of that deep pocket I'm just reeling it in fast I know that's against flounder rules but I'm gonna fish the way I want to fish <laughs> let me do it oh there's fish there we go I haven't felt that in a minute another little guy but thankful <laughs> haven't had a bite in a minute another baby flounder well the future population is looking bright Okay, these guys uh, are not liking being held today. But that's flounder number like seven, I think, this afternoon. Still yet to find that legal fish. But it felt good, because uh, I've gone a long time without a bite. I've had one fish this afternoon that felt heavy that I lost other than that nothing's felt phenomenal this is turning into one of my best days as far as numbers go <laughs> um, I don't know that I've had too many beach flounder days where I've caught seven fish just need to find some size, man. That's uh, that has been the difficult part. Okay, I'm at the little elbow area that I started at. There were definitely flounder in here. All the ones I caught were small. But we're gonna hit it again. See if there's still some fish here. And potentially any bigger ones. It is a very nice setup. I can see why the flounder are hanging here. It's, it's deep water, good moving water. There's one. Come on. I wasn't sure about that one. Let's see ya. Let's see ya. He's taking a little bit. Yeah. A little bit bigger. <laughs> Still small. But on the larger side of the small ones. There he is. Probably the best one today. Similar to that other one, maybe 10, 11 inches. That's crazy that that's the biggest of the day such cool fish all right dude we'll see you there he goes look at him just right there well i think that's flounder number eight my goodness whacking them but cannot get anything with some size <laughs> 